technologies that I still don't understand exactly how it works. But let me give you a kind of a quick overview. Beamforming works basically by sampling the radiated energy that the client radio senses on its antenna. It calculates a calculation, kind of like a matrices, and sends that value back to the access point. The access point then shapes the transmitted energy in a beam, it therefore giving you higher signal and thus greater data rate at a, at a device that's even farther away. So this beam forming out actually allows a client to be further away, yet still receive a hot signal, and we know that a hot signal helps in the data rate. The problem with beam forming in the 802.n standard is it limits to only one device at a time. Other devices that are receiving the energy from the access point will receive the energy, but they will not get the beam forming that the one client will get. In the standard of 802.11 AC, we're going to be able to beam form up to four devices at the same time. This is going to be radically better, in, especially in a home where you have devices further away from the access point, yet still getting very hot signal and high data rate, up to four devices in the house. So 802.11ac is going to provide up to four users that can use beamforming. We'll also look at spatial streaming. This is going to provide a substantial data rate and longer distance. Spatial streams, or MIMO, are some of the most exciting L new technologies that are going to really impact data rates. So here we see on the top picture, we see two antennas on the access point, two antennas on the laptop. This would allow us, with a 802.11n and AC, to have up to two spatial streams. In other words, doubling our data rate with two streams of data, each on each antenna. Down below, I have three, an three antennas on an access point, three antennas and radios on a laptop. I can now get three spatial streams from the access point to the client, tripling my data rate. These are huge, huge uh, technologies. The biggest drawback to spatial streaming is most mobile devices that are battery dependent or heavily battery dependent are not going to take advantage of this technology. Every radio you add to your mobile phone is going to drain your battery that much faster. There may be a time as technology advances that actually the technology and the radios will allow them to become so power efficient that we can actually start start putting in three radios in our mobile devices. But for now, most of your mobile devices are going to have one radio, one antenna, so you're not going to take advantage of spatial streaming except on very high-end laptops. So we can see in the chart below that spatial streams are really a great way to bump up the speed. You can look at our end standard column with 20 megahertz wide channels, 40 megahertz wide channels. As you go from one spatial stream to another, you really begin to see the tremendous bump in overall data rates that you can enjoy. 802.11ac goes up to 2.6 gigabits per second, which is awesome. Keep in mind, battery-dependent mobile devices are not going to take advantage of spatial streams until they can get the RF radio efficiency down to where it will not drain that battery significantly. A question that I want to put to you, what are drawbacks to adding more radios and antennas to devices? Well, we know that one of the advantages is you're going to be able to take advantage of spatial streams, which tremendously impacts your data rate. Spatial streaming depends entirely upon antenna design and power efficiency of our RF radios. Here's a Galaxy, Samsung Galaxy S, and you can see the different antennas. We have GPS antennas, we have WiMAX antennas at 2.6 gigahertz, we have Wi-Fi antennas, we have the actual cell antennas. So one of the the frustrations of mobile devices, especially small ones, is trying to get radios and antennas in these devices, still making them slim and small, attractive. This is some of the frustration of the RF engineer. Now here's a laptop 802.11 and radio. 
Notice the connectors that are outlined there. This shows two connectors allowing two coax cables and two antennas. So this particular laptop 802.11 radio could handle spatial streaming. Be very careful and notice. Notice on the bot features of your laptop or features of your mobile phone. They're not going to tell you how many radios are in there. But it's very critical that you learn how many antennas and how many radios because you're going to find out whether you can or cannot use spatial streaming. Take a minute to take a look at the chart here showing 802.11 AC major feature features and enhancements. We have much higher data rates, wider channels, 80 to 160 megahertz, data rates up to 1.6 gigabits per radio, a uh, different encoding technique, this is 256 QAM, higher bits per packet. We have increased number of spatial streams, we have beam forming, and multi-user MIMO. All of these technologies really take 802.11 AC to a higher level. So as we look at this chart, I want you to pay attention first to the data rate per stream, megabits per second column. Notice down in the N radio area, the row that has the 802.11 N protocol. <clears throat> You'll see a couple things. You'll see the bandwidth, 20 megahertz and 40 megahertz. Look at the data rate. We have 150, 135, 120, 90, 60, 45. What what is one of the ugly secrets of wireless radio is when you connect your access connect to your access point it gives you the maximum radio speed that you possibly could get in other words typically you connect up to your access point in your home and you see it's connected at 150 megabits what it doesn't tell you is as you walk away further and further from that access point those radios actually start slowing their data rate down to say like 135 and 120 and 90 and 60. Yet when you look at your speed on your network card, it says it's it says the same. In other words, whatever you connected at, say 150. So one thing you need to understand is as you get further from the access point, your radio will actually start clocking down the data rate. So don't be fooled by your network card speed uh, indicator because that's probably not what the radios are actually transmitting at. Last thing I want to leave you with is client-side radios are the most critical element in slowing the adoption of a new wireless standard. You can go out and buy the great greatest latest 802.11 AC access point but if you've got G devices, they're going to be worthless. So it's the client-side radios that really slow the adoption of any...